Welcome to the newly launched Ersika podcast channel. My name is Maryam al I'll be your host. And we will begin with our first series about Islamic architectural heritage. This series of podcast conversations is a subset of a broader ongoing series of live talks entitled the Ersika Heritage Talks, which was recently launched by Ersika's Architectural Heritage Section. It's a series of monthly lectures that take place in our headquarters in Istanbul. Every month, a specialist in architectural cult- cultural heritage will be invited to give a lecture about a specific topic related to Islamic architectural history, design, and philosophy. It's an opportunity for them to discuss their areas of interest and for us to learn about a diverse range of topics, including meaning in Islamic architecture, practices of heritage conservation, and Islamic design. In this podcast series, we sit down with the visiting lecturers one-on-one to get a general overview of their work and areas of speciality. In this first episode, Dr. Ali Dost Ertegrul, Irsika's Chief of Architectural Heritage Section, sat down with our guest professor, Ali Uzay Peker. Professor Peker is a professor at Middle East Technical University, where he teaches the graduate program in architectural history. There, he gives courses on symbolism in medieval architecture and cosmology. He is an art and architectural historian with an interest in how meaning is translated in Islamic, Middle Eastern, and local architectural heritage. He has published many articles in several national and international journals and edited books around the world. In this episode, we delve into Professor Peker's thoughts on meaning in Islamic architecture cosmologies and their representations, and how the concepts of the hidden and the manifest, or al-batan wa zahir, are reflected in Islamic architectural concepts. The talk begins here. Today we are together with Professor Dr. Ali Uzay Peker from Middle East Technical University, a graduate program in architectural history. Uh, he's, he teaches courses on symbolism in medieval architecture and cosmology uh, and also he was awarded a postdoc fellowship uh, by Canadian Center for Architecture uh, in Montreal. He is an art and architectural historian with an interest in how meaning is translated in Islamic or also Middle Eastern and local architectural heritage. He has published many articles in a number of national and international journals and edited books and has given conferences related to his profession. Uh, thank you all for coming. It's my pleasure. It's a pleasure you. to see you here and also uh, to be with you. Uh, Professor, we have uh, some questions related to your profession. Uh, My first question, uh, uh, could you reflect upon uh, esoteric and exoteric division in cosmological understanding uh, in Middle East and especially in uh, Islamic countries? Okay, thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, And I would like to, you know, uh, I would gladly uh, go on your question, reflections on it. Actually, um, we have in medieval understanding this great division of two domains. One is the sensible, you know, uh, domain, visible and sensible domain we live in, which is uh, named Alem Shada in Arabic. My trans- pronunciation maybe is not good, but I can, you know, spell as such. And Alam al Gaib, hidden, unseen, and um, inaccessible domain. Uh, this division is, is is universal actually. In 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 ancient Persian cosmology, it is um, Getic and Menok domains, yes. you know, earthly and heavenly domains. In Islamic understanding, uh, we also have. Two terms related to these two domains, um, uh, you know, botany, uh, esoteric, and zahiri, exoteric yeah. uh, domain uh, division. They are so, um, how could I say, so uh, important that even today 
in our uh, daily knowledge, uh, in the daily daily life, some knowledgeable people uh, go on in, the, in using those terms in order to refer earthly and you know heavenly domains uh, with these two names. Actually, uh, for the medieval and even today for the ardent Muslim, uh, this division is, is is related to the phenomena. It's, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we always in the Islamic countries respected the, um, um, how can I say, the, the mysterious, the unreachable, since we usually imagine, we usually, you know, speculate that our gut is beyond the universe. It is also everywhere, every part of the universe full of divine being and uh, his outcome in terms of visible objects. But at the same time, we believe in a divine which is far, which is distant, which is somewhere else. Um, this is a great, great abstract notion, yeah. or God, or Allah, and uh, this division, this division inescapably introduces us with this twofold approach. I mean, to the world. I mean, the domain unseen, unknown domain uh, that we belong, we came from maybe, and we will be sent after that, and the domain we know we can. And, and we can understand, yep. you know, with after our eyewitness, and also our research or you know, exp daily experiences. Uh, what why, why I am um, defining this so uh, depth in depth? It is because you know my profession as an architectural historian um, led me to understand design principles in medieval age in order to um, assess uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the reasons why these architectural spaces created by medieval designers. I mean, not only defining them, classifying them, categorizing them, you know, in a taxonomical approach. I always ask the question why and, you know, uh, and under which circumstances. These questions let me to study you know, the design notions, design concepts borrowed from the current cosmologies, religious uh, inclinations in medieval age. Then this is, uh, is the major division, the major twofold um, the conceptual background. You know, this division based on seen and unseen domains yeah. in brief. And uh, let me now illustrate uh, this uh, in terms of outcomes in art architecture. Yeah. Uh, architectural decoration uh, or decoration in general in, our, in Islamic art has uh, tremendously been, you know, discussed and speculations going on on this, especially the meaning of those 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 figures, mostly abstracted figures, in Islamic decoration, plant motifs, animal motifs, geometrical designs. Why should on earth, somebody spent so much time and effort to abstract, to render uh, the the natural things inaccessible by means of greatly changing their form. Why? Actually, uh, uh, my convictions might be, you know, under discussion here because, because, you know, I don't want to go on with others' views because I, I reflected upon them and I have some ideas and I would like to share them with you. Actually, in my conviction, uh, Islamic architectural decoration, I'm an architectural historian and mostly concerned with architectural decoration, mostly aims to introduce a curtain, a curtain, a kind of separation yeah. Between the alam al gaib and alam al the yeah. domain which is divine and the domain which is earthly, material. Why should uh, this sort of a uh, upset decorative pattern, you know, or patterns, be selected for that? Actually, since they regarded the alam al the world we live in, a work of God, and this is already a work of art. Yeah. 
and this is sufficient for its uh, for its um, appreciation by human beings. Actually, then there is no need to reflect them on canvas or on paper or on walls in order to create copies of the credit world. Instead of this, we can reflect upon the beauties of creation in terms of the order in the universe, uh, in, in, in eliminating the volumetric existence. Instead, we can reflect upon by means of notions you know, derived from this volumetric existence. What are these notions? I mean, beauties of creation. Beatus of creation actually is a notion directly related to to human nature, which might offer us very positive um, aspect. You know, this is goodness. This is beneficiary beneficiary aspects of humankind. I mean, actually, beauty and goodness are associated in Islamic art, and this beauty of the universe, together with the together with the good, let me uh, summarize as such, altogether represented by means of abstract decorations. Why good? It is because there is an utmost symmetry and geometrical order there. Yeah. And this order and symmetry altogether lead human mind also think um, or in a way become reasonable, become, become uh, humankind instead of chaotic, and you know a, a kind of slave of the senses. Then this goodness aspect, together with the beauties of the universe, credit the, those abstract patterns altogether. We find in our decorative programs. This uh, I regard as a threshold, as a passageway yeah, altogether. Passageway. Let me come from this to another notion in relation to the, a basic function of universe. Universe is credited by the credits, you know, by the creatures altogether, and creatures have temporary uh, survival in yep, universe, yep. and in this temporary survival, the universe actually is itself temporary. It has a beginning and end, and this is uh, something that is the uh, that is the architectural decoration that the space it delineates. You know, it's a temporary space. You are here, you are born without your decision, your selection, you are born to, to this world and you will be di dying you know, without your conscious involvement. Then what we have here is a temporary uh, uh, existence, yes. a temporary, temporarily witnessing divine yes. and his uh, creatures altogether. This temporary notion of the universe is reflected to artificial decoration in general and altogether, this is Alem al-Shahada yeah. that we experience in architectural space, which is universe itself, uh, with its all temporary existence. Then, architectural space is indirectly as a, is, is a temporary space. It is yeah. not a permanent uh, structure. And what we have here, six directions. And six directions is, 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 um, is a symbol of the um, space. You know, not only the microcosmic space we are here, with its with its with its uh, ceiling, ground, and and the four walls. It's, it's just six in number, but the entire universe, with right. sky, with with earth, and the directions created by the movement of the sun altogether is is represented by the number six and yes. hexagon. Six and hexagon are almost sacred. Mm -hmm. uh, by uh, since they represent the created domain, the universe. Altogether, then we have here in architectural space this universe represented. Yani, this is Alim yeah. Shahada, the the, ex, the exoteric um, aspect. 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 The other one, the Batani, yani esoteric aspect, uh, is 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 a, is a feature, is a nature of God, divine, and uh, human human beings has a potential also to approach to this what is whatever Batani, because you know you can develop your senses, your spirit might be heightened and erosion, erosion and could be approached to the divine, but not complete unity is possible on earth, and this could only be, of course, possible after that, but you can approach to it. Then there is a potential also to grasp 
botany, whatever botany, but partly, of course. Yeah, I hope I have been able to explain yeah, some of the yeah, features. Thank you, thank you. This uh, <laughs> of very good, very good as explanation. Yeah. Also, uh, related to your uh, speak, uh, speech, we can. Uh, I, I want to ask a question. Uh, I wonder the interaction of form and function uh, related to uh, universal cosmos perception yeah. in Middle East and in Islamic world. Given the fact that uh, in Islamic design there is a, there are principles like those I have been talking about, schemes generated, you know this order, uh, geometrical order, is regarded as a sign of God's intellect, uh, borrowed by human yes. intellect, uh, primary intellect, and the human intellect altogether, um, and uh, the, the the order in cosmos introduced to the designer as a beginning. And they never kitted this idea. And for uh, and also we should take into consideration that in medieval age space is not single functional. I mean space has a primary function sometimes, like a throne hall, for example, in a yeah. palace. But uh, in general, space is multifunctional, and this provided designers, you know, put the, um, the possibility to fairly design their buildings after those cosmological schemes based upon those um, division of heavenly and earthly domains, Zahiri, but, Zahiri, Batini, and so forth. I mean, what I mean is that this multifunctional character of the space, architectural space, one of the other reasons why it is so multifunctional is that no furniture at all that we use today yeah. existed in medieval age. They cross legged on, on carpets or used sedir conscious to sit until, on. Until the 19th century. Yeah? Yes, of course. Then this is a potential for the designer to introduce his schemes borrowed from the cosmological understanding of the age, which is, and there are direct references to sacred books. The Quran is a source, of course, and in Quran there are many, many cosmological and um, Kevni okay. verses in relation. That 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 credits a, at least a, a a reference, a realm of references for the intellectuals and designers to be used for their architecture. Then, architectural design in medieval age is a conscious design. It is a design based upon uh, cosmology and religious understandings, and the and the and the and the and the great concept of the divine God, actually, uh, was a generator. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Maybe, maybe last question. Uh, I wonder. Uh, you mentioned botany, zahiri, mm -hmm. and uh, relation between the uh, form and function. But uh, I wonder, uh, is this idea uh, on that time during medieval age? Uh, is everybody aware of uh, that knowledge? Aware of uh, that situation or? Uh, how can it be? How can it be? Certainly aware. Certainly aware. Why? Why? If you live in nature, you are part of it. Yeah. If you are part of it, you are part of the universe. This is the this is the this is the uh, the great tragedy of the modern man yeah. and woman, being far from nature. If you are far from nature, you cannot get this this sort of cosmological notions. You know that. Uh, have been inspired by nature or natural surroundings yeah. and uh, and modern um, ecological design yeah. modern environmental design sort of approaches actually are, uh, are, are 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 initiatives in order to discover rediscover yeah, yeah. regenerate the medieval yeah. mentality This, <laughs> so simple. This is this is really interesting. So also, simple, so simple. Uh, in in modern times, uh, we are mm, learning something something from the theoretically, and so after that we are uh, doing it in practical way. But in traditional yes t technique, theory derived directly from nature. Yeah. yeah. And the religious texts, uh, so, um, theological, theosophical altogether texts, are advanced. Reflections upon nature. So simple. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. It was my pleasure. Uh, Thank you very much. It's, Thank you very much. It's Thank good to much. see you here. It is my pleasure. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Please write to us with any comments or questions.